everybody once again it's brand man sean and as you can see i have a very special guest today uh just for starters i've been telling you guys for a while that i wanted to bring more entrepreneurs on, onto the channel and more things outside of just music because we're in an age where independent artists really need to become more business focused business minded and this is the beginning of that series interviewing and, and bringing a lot of thought leaders and successful entrepreneurs from different spaces for you to really understand, um, right? And today we have Peter Pru. He is the creator of e-commerce Empire Builders, right? This is a, it's, it started as a side project, uh, project for him, as he said, but it's grown into something so much bigger than that. Um, it's, it's a full movement and it's a seven figure business if I got that correct, is that correct? Yes, it is correct, it is correct, man. <laughs> oh no, number one, the thing that a lot of artists are missing is money and a lot of the conversation is gonna be about money and marketing, of course. So, welcome, without further ado. <laughs> What's up, Peter? Thank you so much for having me. I'm hoping that I can um, provide and shed as much light as I humanly possibly can for you guys because I want you guys to, like we were talking before, like you guys all do what you love right now and you deserve to also get paid for what you love to do. Right? Like that's like the dream lifestyle, right? Um, so I'm hoping I could shed as much, uh, as much uh, as insight as I possibly can to help you guys do that. That's, that's perfect. I mean, so I already know a couple of topics and things that just to let you guys know what I uh, would what I would love to even hear about are things like merch because we have products, all these side things to sell. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about merch, uh, just a little bit about the marketing funnel. Before we even get into that, like how'd you even get started in what you're doing right now? Yeah, so I, I call myself a, a 10 year overnight success story because a lot of the people that I talk about, like, and understand guys, like, as you get started in like business, especially like online business, like you're go expect that there's going to be, you know, a lot of road bumps and bruises along the way. Like if it was easy, everybody would do it. Like th th there's nothing truer than that. Um, but I've been I doing, it makes it sound so easy though. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? uh, so I've been doing online businesses for about 10 years. I started when I was a freshman in college. Uh, my roommate at the time, uh, at the time, Google was very easy to manipulate. Basically, you could like rank pages in Google, super simple. Mm -hmm. And basically, a lot of people were making a lot of money. I was making an extra hundred bucks a week in college, and I was like the happiest dude ever. I was like, oh my God, like, I was like, yeah, you know, drinks on me every Friday. Night. Like, yes, like, let's do it. Um, unfortunately, a hundred bucks a week isn't enough to, you know, not have a job. So after graduation, had to get a full time job. Um, but I always had this like, like this itch. Like, I was like, you know what? is that there's more here. I feel like there's more, like I have something more to give, like, or create. Like I had this little uh, success in college. I was making a little bit of money, but like I didn't like go all in on it. So mm -hmm. that's when I started diving really uh, deep into uh, e-commerce. So e-commerce is selling like physical products online, kind of like Amazon. Uh, had a ton of different kinds of businesses along the way. I sold on Amazon. We lost like a, you know, to make a long story short, we basically invested like thirty, forty thousand dollars into Amazon businesses, lost all that, didn't have any customers because a lot of times when you sell on Amazon, you're, you're, those are Amazon's customers, right? Not, not ours, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. So I started learning about like, how do I create a business that I'm in full control of? And I think this is going to be one of the most important thing I can, I can tell you guys is there's going to be a lot of people out there. There's going to be a lot of websites out there where they're going to, they're going to basically have you like, they're going to basically control your business and you're not even going to know it. Well, Perfect. Like, this, is, this is Instagram right now. This is Facebook. All these platforms where they have their audience, they don't control their audience. I, I need people to make, be clear. Exactly. That. Exactly. You're, you're exactly right. And that's exactly with Amazon. That's how we got like screwed over with Amazon, right? Because we had some false claims made against what we were selling on Amazon, completely fake, but Amazon just banned us, right? It took us a year to get the account ba uh, banned, you know, account back from that point. Wow. And think about it guys, like your fans, right? They're your fans. Like those customers on Amazon, those are my customers, but I never had that data, right? Like I wasn't able to do it. So when you're building your business, make sure, and the strategies we're going to be talking about is going to like do this for you, but you need to pull them off of YouTube, pull these people off of uh, your podcast, pull them off of Instagram, right? Create an asset for yourself. Now, 
I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, well, like, how do you do that? Like, what, what's like, how do you, what do you mean pull it off? Well, like for one, like getting their email address, getting their contact information. A lot of people say that like email marketing is dead. Nobody checks their emails anymore. Nope. But I can tell you like every business that I've ever had, right? Every business that I've ever had, the only tangible asset, like something that you can take and put it on a USB drive and like go wherever in the world, right? That email list is your, your most valuable possession, right? It doesn't matter guys. Like the reason, like, for example, like, like, so look at your, like your best friend, let's say he emails you, right? You're going to open it, right? Yep. Right. You're going to open it. Same thing goes for us. It's the relationship you have with the people on your email list. They should be excited to open your email, right? Like, and you should be providing like valuable content for them or, or new music or whatever it is that you're, you're putting out to them, you know, and a part of that. So and that's a, a great point because one, I even did a video on this probably a couple of weeks ago, just the fact that no email lists are not dead. Like even if you look at the percentages of my traditional email openings or people I've worked with, it's, on par or even greater a lot of times than how many people see your Instagram post, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's one thing. But the second part is you said they should be excited to open your emails. That's up to you, mm -hmm. right? Like you shouldn't be spamming your audience and that you, you create the, the circumstance on whether they're not opening your particular emails or not. There's a lot of emails that I, I scroll right past, but there's some people who email me and I'm like, let me check this. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, like, I actually just had this conversation with somebody earlier today is like, think about, okay, so let's say email, you know, open rates, they're, they're all low, right? A lot of people don't open their emails anymore. It is, it's fine. Right. But you have to think about your cause, your fans, your customers, your potential customers, like think about different people, how they consume things. Like for instance, like I have a YouTube channel, right? It's not huge, but I have a YouTube channel, right? I also have a podcast, right? I have people that listen to my podcast that never, ever, ever been on my YouTube channel. Right? I have people that are on my Instagram that have never been on my podcast or my YouTube. I have people on my email list that have never been on any of those things. People can consume content differently. So you're never going to be able to reach like 100% of your, your, your audience that you, you have. But think about it. You get 20% on the email, you know, another 4% on Instagram, you know, another 5% on YouTube. Right? You, you start getting them from other places. So that, that number, it goes, it goes drastically higher. Right? So it's worth having that asset because if you don't have that, e like an email list or, or, or something that you control, because all of these platforms, like, like they can shut you down, like for no reason, guys. Like I felt it really bad because it impacted my, like literally my revenue. But like, even like YouTube, even with my YouTube channel and like my podcast, I'm like, okay, how can I get people off this? Cause you never know what might happen. They might not rank your video for whatever reason they decide, right? Mm -hmm. You have no control. You literally have no control, which is, it's so scary as a business owner, as a creator to be like, okay, well, like, how do I turn this traffic, this, you know, these customers into like some, like an asset for my business. And I, I would love you guys to all like, think of that. You're, you're a business, like you are a business, you're a personal brand, but a personal brand or, or a songwriter, whatever, you're still a, your business. Okay. Um, so make a long story short with Amazon, you know, we, we got banned off of that went, still had to, had to work full time, uh, at this time kind of went through like a dark period of my life for a couple of years. So I was just like blaming everybody, but myself for like my lack of success in life. And, uh, I was like, you know, like one day I just woke up and I was like, okay, so everything I've learned, all the crap I've went through, I'm just going to quit now and not try again. So like it, it you know, it, it did take a while, but I, I was like, you know, what? I gotta, I gotta rebuild a business. I, I gotta get back in this. I gotta keep going. How long would you say that was? It was probably like two years, two, three years. Okay. Where I was just like, I just fell into a loop like a lot of us do. You know, you're just doing the same thing day in and going to work, you know, sitting in traffic, going to bed, just doing all that. Um, and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to rebuild a business. But this time I'm going to build a business that like I actually care about. One that I, I don't even care if I win. Like I'm just going to have fun doing it. So that business was my fishing business. That was our, um, you know, our first you know, seven figure business. I don't want to like make false explanation, but it was years of, of hard work to build that business to that seven figure level. Um, but fishing for me was like, you know what, for me, like I do this every single weekend. It's something I did with my dad, uh, when I was growing up, it's a way I, like, I remember my dad and it's something like I want to do with my kids in the future as well. And I was like, you know, what? I love this. This is what I want to do. Right. So started building the business, uh, around fishing. Um, and just had like a great time, brought on some bad partners just to make a long story. You know, uh, we ended up selling the business earlier this year for a nice can we, paycheck. Can we fit in that for a second? Because uh, 
Can we sit in that for a second? Just because like a lot of situations that a lot of artists encounter or just people in general encounter within music is has to do with bad partnerships. So can you give me just a few lessons on maybe were there any warning signs that partners were bad or just some things that you learned in that space? Yeah, it's it's great. You're like the first person ever asked me this. Um, it's like, yeah, I'm definitely not as open about this part because it was like so like it's believe it or not and i'm sure you've had this like where what people will tell you one thing but they'll tell you what you want to hear but then their actions will never do that so like with my partners like like they they said they said oh yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna be all in with you you know we're gonna you know divvy up all the tasks you know you i'm gonna be the you know the cfo of it i'm gonna handle all this then there was like this marketing person that was gonna do all this and my job was gonna be like you know all these other things and like nobody was do, holding up their end of the bargain essentially it was still me basically running my business and we were growing pretty fast. Um, and I still was, it was like, why did I bring you guys on? Right? Like, why did I bring you guys on? We, we made these expectations that we set for each other, like who's responsible for what. And then yet somehow I just gave you guys a, a very big portion of my business for, and I'm still doing all the work. So like one thing I would definitely, definitely do guys, like if you ever, and like, honestly, like I wouldn't even bring on part. I am so, I it's left such a bad taste in my mouth, man. Like I rather you just like, if you're going to hire, need help, just hire like an agency, hire, hire somebody that can help you just pay them. Right. It, it, it may be in the future. I'll bring on partners for my other businesses that we have. We have like a supplement business that we're launching soon, but you know, just, really, really make sure the expectations are clear and like you get that stuff in like writing if, if the, the, those end of the bargains aren't, uh, aren't uh, held up. It, it, trust me, like it's worth it. It's worth the lawyer fees. If you have to go pay a lawyer a thousand bucks, like it's worth it. Like I'm telling you, like it's a lot of money to go a thousand bucks to waste on a lawyer, but it's worth the headache that you're going to save yourself. Mm. So. Great note, great note, because a lot of times we do not like to pay, uh, particularly for things that seem long term or it's, it's only a possibility but the possibilities are very real <laughs> so okay. and you don't ever want to think like that yeah for sure like oh like if you know uh if it happens like if we ever you know break up like you know yeah. so it's you know it, it, it but it's always good to have that clear because it's business like in business you just have to be you 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 have to leave emotion out of business a lot of people that i see that come into like online marketing online businesses in general like they t they're so emotionally invested in it that like you can't even see clearly right like we think oh we launched this new t-shirt and people aren't buying it and then we're like oh it's it's my me it must be me right like it, it's my fault that it's not happening and you get emotionally invested and you're like oh well like like it, it's not it's not though like you always have to think about like the the data or you always like let the data tell you where to look where there's problems because I can tell like every one of you that if you have followers, if you have people listening to your music, like they want to get closer to you, whether you like to believe it or not. Right. Like I, I'm telling you a hundred percent, like for me, like when I started my YouTube channel, like very small channel, like but very niche. Right. And I went to this conference that's very niche to it. Like the immediate when we even went to that conference, like, people, like we couldn't even walk down the hallway. Like people were like, yo, what's up, man? Like how you helped me so much. Like, blah, 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 like all this stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, it's the same thing. It goes for every single one of you. If you went to like some thing where you, your community would be, it's the same thing. They want to get closer to you, right? Sometimes it's just the execution wasn't done right. Maybe you didn't just portray whatever you're trying to sell well enough to them. Um, but don't tie yourself so emotionally to it. And, and trust me, this happens all the time. Uh, even when you, when you think you've made it, right? Like, oh man, like you didn't, let's say you, you, you didn't make as much money as you made today as you did yesterday or, 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 or something like that. And then you're like, and then you're beating yourself up over it and you're not thinking clearly, but uh, don't tie yourself so emotionally. I love that because, oh, wait, you broke up for a second. All right, cool. Um, a part, part of being an artist, right, is being very in touch with your emotions in a lot of ways. Uh, so. How do you, I would love to get your opinion on how an artist reconciles their creativity and emotion with the data at certain points. Okay. So specifically in terms of, um, this isn't like, working, this isn't working. They don't like it. I need to change something. Okay. So, so a few, a few things like in terms of like mu music, in terms of music or like in terms of like product that they plan to sell. Let's start with product and then I will, I know it's a little bit out of your wheelhouse, but I would like to get your opinion on music too. 
So, so in terms of product, like I always like to think of um, under, you have to understand like your fans extremely, extremely well. Right. And what's the real reason that they, they listen to your music. Right. Same thing goes for me, like with, with, with my customers, right. My fans, my, my fishing people that like fishing, right. Like I have to think like, well, why do they buy stuff from me? Why would they even want to buy something from me? Right. So I have to think, I'm like, okay, well, what's the result that they, they want to get from this? Do they just, do they just want to, you know, they catch bigger fish, catch more fish. Like how can I help them do that? And, and a lot of that, it's easier for me to say that in terms of like a musician and stuff like that, you have to think like, okay, this customer wants to, and I think the easiest one that anybody here can do is like merch stuff. Um, I could kind of walk through exactly what I would do if I was anybody here listening to this, trying to monetize the audience is you need to be, Firstly, get them off of the platform, right? So things that I would do is so it's something called a, a sales funnel, right? It sounds like it's a complicated thing. It's really not. A sales funnel is, is a very simple step-by-step -step process that you tell your customer or your fan what to do and how to do it and, and however much they you know, want to buy of your product. So let's say you're selling a t-shirt. Let's say you come up with a cool design for a t-shirt that you want to launch out to your audience, right? So how I would test that is I would set up a very, very basic uh, website funnel template. And I can give you one of these, There's, it sounds more complicated than this, it's two, it's two web pages, and you can literally click a button and you can download it into your account, and it's, it's just that simple. It's right there for you to build and just copy and paste your, your images in there, right? Now, it comes down to you guys, is your, your brand, your personal brand needs to be portrayed really well on these pages, okay, because you have, like the colors, like usually for a lot of the people that I work with, like that are just selling online, like physical products, they don't necessarily need to think of brand right away because they don't know yet. You guys who already have like, a, like some fans that are following you, like you want to make sure it's congruent with, with you, like these web pages. So changing around the colors, the, uh, the, uh, the products, but so how, how the kind of the sales funnel works is right. When they, when, let's say you're like, Hey, you know, we're going to be launching a brand new t-shirt. Um, you can pre-order one right now, you know, link in the description or however you're getting them from SoundCloud or wherever. Right. So they land on this first page and this is where you make them a special offer. Okay. In exchange for their email address, right? Remember what I said, or email address or messenger bot opt-in or whatever, put them to a Facebook group or get them off of wherever they're at, right? You want to create more places where you can reach them, right? I always recommend email. It's just easier. It's, it's built into the system, right? Um, and when I say offer, it's not just the t-shirt. What else can you give them in with the t-shirt? Because everybody out there, YouTubers, they're like, oh, get my merch, get my merch. But like, they're all spewing the same exact thing that it's like, the only, it's just, it's just a t-shirt. Like it's not cool. Like it's anymore. Right. Like, cause everybody's doing it. So what can you put in with that t-shirt, right. To, to make it more valuable, to boost the perceived value of it. So like just things that I'm thinking off the top of my head, maybe you give them an exclusive, um, exclusive album of yours of some unreleased songs that you never put out anywhere else. Right. So your true fans will be like, holy hell, like, Yes, I would just, I would pay just the, the, the 10 bucks just for that, but he's giving it that to me for free, right? So you can put that into like a little members area or you could just email them like some special links with this, with this content, right? What else can we put? Maybe a, a private Facebook group or wherever where you go live, maybe like once a week or something where you just like, you literally just when you're out on a walk, just get your phone and just talk to your fans, right? Makes them feel a little bit more connected to you. Now that's the first page. That's where it's that perceived value is really high. They enter their email address. They're like, yes, I want this. So boom, you just got them off, off of YouTube or wherever, Instagram. Then they hit our order page and that's where they just, that's where the magic happens, right? They have the billing information, shipping information. Uh, they're like, yes, I want this t-shirt. And after they click submit, that's perfect. The order is taken. You just made money. Now you can do these cool things called upsells. Now an upsell is is after they put their credit card information, they can, you can present them with different kinds of products or services that you have to make yourself more money. This is where I think most of you will make a lot more. So I recommend you starting to think, and I would never start a business without this one thing. It's continuity, uh, subscription boxes or, or uh, reoccurring revenue. So what I mean by that is like, you know, like BarkBox and Dollar Shave Club, you know, those companies where they just use, you, you give them 20 bucks and they send you stuff in the mail, right? Exactly. 
I would do something like this for, for your businesses. I see a lot of creators and um, you know people in, in this space that they just set up like this Patreon thing or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. People have suggested that I do it, but I just, it, it wasn't for me. No, this is I how you have a subscription model, by the way, though. I have a, I have a SaaS background, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that model. So exactly, me too. I would never start a business without it, right? No matter, it doesn't matter what the business is. You just have to think about, think about it. Like, okay, how, what would people find it valuable enough to give me 20 bucks a month or 30 or a hundred bucks, whatever it is. Um, and not like Patreon, like, and that stuff. Like, I'm like, what? Like they probably take money from you. They probably, is there fees that they take from you from that? And they're like, Oh, just give me a dollar a month. I'm like a dollar. <laughs> like, come on. Like, so, so, so yeah. <laughs> here's the thing you want to, cause you're going to have these ridiculously raving fans that are going to, they're going to take every, you can have as many upsells as you want. Like you can have a hundred of them if you want. And you're going to have those raving fans. that will be like, yes, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want everything. This guy is selling me. I recommend you guys just have one t-shirt. Like it's going to be like your main whatever t-shirt thing is. You sell that as the main product and then you upsell them into some sort of monthly subscription thing where they help support you in exchange for that support, right? That $20 a month or whatever it is. That's where maybe you can introduce like a group where you go live weekly or, or monthly or every day. You know, it, it depends on how much you want to put in. Maybe you send them a t-shirt every single month um, while being part of this club, like a new exclusive design. Maybe they're the first to hear new music. Um, maybe they're the first to hear like, uh, you know, unreleased music that you have, or you're just testing, or they get to see you create, right? A lot of us forget that like one of the most powerful things I think I've ever done in my fishing business was showing the behind the scenes. Like people love behind the scenes stuff, especially with what you're doing. Like this is why vlogs and stuff work, but like it's not like vlogs are too, like, they're too perfect a lot of times. Like people want to see like the behind the behind the scenes, like you actually like sitting there doing the hard work. And like, that could be like exclusive content that you give them in exchange for that. Right. So I would like, like if I was you, like I would do something like that, like immediately, right. Giving them some sort of physical product. Maybe it's a t-shirt. Maybe it's something different every month. It's like a surprise for them that they can anticipate for. So they don't know what it is. And all this is like super simple to set up. I mean, you can have this set up within like not even an hour, you know? So, uh, yeah, like that, that continuity piece, man, like I, if I would, doesn't matter if I'm selling information, if I'm selling you know, fishing stuff, mm -hmm. whatever it always, that's like the core. Cause I think about a lot of businesses, they fail because they're always fighting for new customers. And when you're just, when you're fighting for new customers all the time, you're basically competing against Amazon, Walmart, you know, your, all your, your competitors. When for us, I'm like, you make so much more money from your existing customers than you ever will with the new, with the new ones, because your current customers, they know, like, and trust you. They know who you are. They have a relationship with you, right? They've given you money, right? They want to buy more stuff from you. And you just have to figure that out, what that is, right? Like, and I can tell you from, from just like a lot of experience, just like, it's in, especially in personal branding, it's like just getting closer to you, right? Like their first touch point with you might be like their YouTube channel, okay? Like that's free. I call that the relationship, right? That's the relationship funnel, right? Where you just put out content, you're just attracting new people and new fans, right? And what's the next step? Okay, well, maybe you guys want to buy like a t-shirt, right? Put them through the t-shirt. Okay, then the next step in the ladder might be you know the, the continuity piece then maybe you know a concert right then you know you know it just keeps going from there how can they just keep getting closer and closer to you because i i'm telling you like a, a lot of people like they 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 get the, the, the only reason they're watching you is because they they want to escape something right they're, they're, they they want to be you know what I mean? Like they're not, they're taking precious time out of their day. Like, can you re say that? Because it broke up for a second. I, I don't know if the recording got it, but it broke up. Uh, so I was saying like, people are watching you because they want to be entertained by you. Okay. Right. Like they, they, they might be like, you know, you know, <laughs> they, they, you know, they might be watching after like a long day of work or whatever. Right. Like they, they want to, a lot of times, like, especially in like the YouTube space and stuff like that, like people want to live vicariously through it. Like this is why movies and stuff exist. So sometimes you have to think of yourself as a character, right? <laughs> like, cause you are, you're, you're putting yourself out there on the internet. And uh, it, those of you that are like 
just doing um like are a lot of people just doing like songwriting would you say there so there's a segment of people who are just doing songwriting but then there's people who are the full-blown artist putting it out there it's it's every slice of the pie uh, or every makeup you can but think. just are you like so for example like just people that are that are just putting out music like immediately like, like i would mix in like some of the personal branding stuff like putting putting yourself out there showing that behind the scenes stuff not just being like oh here's just new music you know that i'm putting oh, yeah, out yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah definitely so um 100 like having a funnel and and keeping it simple like i see like a lot of you guys will be like okay i see this big guy logan paul right or whatever he has a merch store that means i should get a merch store right but that's not necessarily the case because you you don't see the behind the scenes of his back end business, right? Like he has a he probably has like a hundred people that work with him, right? Like from designers to to all of this stuff. So you go in and you're like, oh well, I should get a merch store. But in fact, it's like you have to build up to that point. So what I recommend that's why I recommend you guys is like if you do want to do merch, right? Whatever it is, don't go to like a Shopify store or or any of these platforms where they're like, oh, let me go put up a bunch of designs. No, this is what confuses people. And I use this a lot, uh, but we have the attention span of goldfish, right? Like whether we all want to believe this or not, we do. Like the second you give people more than one option, your, 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 your sales will get lower. So if you only give your customers one option, you only have one t-shirt, even if you do it like launch style, hey, this month, this is our exclusive t-shirt that we're launching, right? It's only available this month. And once it's, this month is over, it's gone. You can never, ever, ever get this t-shirt again. That's a better model. That model will make you more money than if you just put in a hundred designs in your shop by store. Like I can tell you, if Logan Paul decided to do this, he would make a ridiculous amount more money because it creates the two biggest psychological triggers that people have when they buy is scarcity and urgency. And a lot of people fake it by putting timers on their websites or go, you only have one minute to buy. Like if you don't buy in this minute, this is gone, but then you wait a minute and then you could still buy it. Right? Like, well, at least with this, uh, like if Logan Paul did like launch style where right? it's like exclusive design, this hoodie is only available this week only. It'll never be able to be purchased again. I can guarantee you that, hoodie even if, if it was ugly yeah. like would still sell because people would be like oh Alec, i have this piece of you know clothing that is never going to be in print again yeah yeah I, I love to hear you talking about this because it's just to have a different voice you know people probably get used to my voice on this channel and think that it's like bs when i really talk about options and diversity but this is really what i'm talking about like for people to understand that when you create options it literally it not just oh as an opinion it people the, the numbers go down the mm -hmm. numbers truly go down think about it's called the de decision fatigue basically right you don't want to think how many times do you go to a restaurant and after a while you just you might say what's the best thing on the menu or what's good here it's because you might not you don't want to feel you don't want to go through all these things you don't you have a a cable subscription well you know today's you might not have a cable subscription today but you know people have cable and they don't look at all the channels they they just want three or four of the channels that's all they really watch same for youtube you have a set of youtube channels there's so many other channels you don't you, you watch you don't watch apple right apple literally takes so many decisions away for you versus android where you can kind of do whatever you want but apple streamlines a customer ex experience Mm -hmm. or you know through a lot of limitation so I, i'm just really glad to hear you talk about how it literally it does take sales downs and too many options is a bad thing people love to be like as much as you don't want to believe it it's true like people love to be told what to do people <laughs> yeah. no, they do like yeah. like for example like i i know just the area that i live in like food trucks are very popular here like they're, they're famous for the food trucks, like great food truck. Guess what? When you go to these food trucks, you have one option. They don't serve a hundred different things in there. There's like one thing and they're, they're like, okay, this food truck makes meatballs, but they make the best meatballs. You can never get these meatballs as good as anywhere else as if you could from this food truck, right? I rather, like I tell us to people all the time, like I'd rather you be the best at selling like this, this spatula, right? Than anybody else, just like just be, be. If you're the best at selling a spatula, you'll you'll you will make a lot of money, right? You just have to figure out how can you sell a spatula, how can you get people to come buy your spatula, right? And it comes down to understanding your audience, your fans, whoever that's looking at you, right? Because you're not selling a spatula, 
right? You're selling a, 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 a solution, right? Like what does a spatula do? Like who's the people that we're selling it to? Maybe like the way, if I'm going to sell spatula and like some people think, oh, like well, everybody has spatula. Well, no, because I'm going to be like, okay, who for, first I start with who? Who am I going to sell a spatula to? Because if I say I'm going to sell to everybody, I'm done. I'm toast because then I'm competing against Amazon. So I'm going to be like, okay, this spatula is a premium spatula designed only for people that love, uh, love cooking barbecue. And then I'll be like, okay, well, like they love cooking barbecue. What else can I add in here to help them cook a uh, great barbecue? Maybe I'll put like a, a, you know, a video guide together. Maybe I'll go interview like top five, you know, uh, grill masters or something and be, and put that in there and give it to them for free to make sure when they get my spatula that they're like, oh, you, they know exactly how to use it. They know they have all this other information that they can never get anywhere else. So I know that's kind of uh, different from just like the merch, but it's still an important concept to grasp. Like you don't have to stretch, like a lot of people stress themselves out and they think that like back to like tying your emotion to the result, they like what most people will do is, oh, oh this shirt, nobody wants it. I'm just going to go desi design another one, right? Like, no, that's, that's not true. Your, your, your delivery was probably what was wrong. Yes. Right. Not more. More is usually not better. Right? I could just tell you that like more is usually not better. So focus on like different kinds of strategies. Like if I could leave you guys like, with that one thing is like if you're going to sell like merch or a T-shirt, right, do it in like a scarcity kind of way where, hey, you know, it's only available here then upsell them into some sort of monthly subscription thing where they have closer access to you. They get more behind the scenes stuff with you. Maybe they get to see the creative process of how you're doing things. Because like I said, believe it or not, a lot of people, they want to get to know you better, right? Like even though you might not think that you're that interesting, I trust me, I, I think that all the time, but people will pay to get to know you better, learn more from you. Do you have um, something like that for yourself where people get to know you better um, outside of just the education that you provide, but even a little bit more personal? Yeah. So we have things like there's um, like I have like a like a mastermind group of people that, you know, they just have access to me anytime. Like they could just there's an app. It's called Voxer that we use. If they message me on it, then I could just it's like a walkie talkie app. We just talk the walkie talkie back and forth. We have, you know, Q&A sessions, you know, twice a week for, you know, a couple hours uh, each time, just talking back and forth, working with each other with our businesses. We want to do like events and stuff in the future as well that we have planned um look for once we had an we, there was an event that ju we just came from um and uh you know there was i found out a bunch of our our, our students were going to be there so we were like oh let's get everybody you know and we, we you know rented out like a, a big area inside of this brazilian steakhouse got everybody there paid for them all just treated everybody had a good time just like just something like that that was only for the students right like only for the people that that have you know shown that commitment to actually want to get closer to you Mm, dope 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 i mean i think that's a perfect example of a fan experience type situation mm -hmm. as well where you know there, there are these curated experiences that are only a certain amount of people who've already shown a certain amount of commitment even get access to it's not mm -hmm. even like oh do you just want this one off it's no if you haven't proven yourself already to have a certain level of commitment there's there's no other way to get in so i think that's that's great there's an artist I'm named Ryan Leslie, who who does that very well. I don't know who if you know who he is, but are you are you familiar with Superphone? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Actually, I want to switch really quickly because we talked a little bit about um your businesses, and we kind of sidetracked just for conversation. That was my, my fault, but I thought it was necessary. But back to the the uh, progression of your business, right? You. I think the last thing you talked about, well, you haven't gotten to empire builders for sure. So <laughs> bring us back along those. So, so, so I, um, make a long story short, there was some, so I started that fishing business on like, be rich. No, not the case. That's when I kind of, you know, took a step back and I was like, well, like, why am I not getting the results that I want? And that's when I learned about these sales funnels where I'm like, hey, you know what? Why am I going to sell a hundred different fishing lures when I can just pick a couple of them and be the best at those? That's exactly what I did. What we kind of just went through, right? So after a while, I brought on some partners, drama, sold the business. Um, and then my time started freeing up again. And I kind of like was posting. There's a lot of online Facebook groups. I started posting just randomly in these groups, just like stuff that was working for me in our businesses. 
and people started asking, Hey, like, can you like show me this for me? This, so I was like, okay, the easiest way I can do this is like to just go make a YouTube video about it and then just like put, paste it in there. So like a, the, a bunch of the first couple of videos that we had were, it wasn't even me on the screen. It was just like, just the screen. Cause I was just trying to share people like, okay, you just click this and do this. And it's just so funny looking back, like this was a, a year and a half ago now when I started that channel, um, just purely based on helping like nothing. I didn't sell anything. I didn't have anything to sell. I literally just had just, I was to helping just tutorials for people, um, to see the progression that it made. Now, when I started, I picked, uh, I just picked YouTube just because I was like, okay, it's the easiest platform to have. Um, and things started catching on like people started getting good results for their own businesses using these strategies you know one thing led to another we've grown pretty pretty quickly we've got a ton of students just you know doing really well for themselves um and now we're actually in the process of launching our uh, our supplement business so we're hoping that is also uh, our next success story so that's kind of currently where we're at supplement or what the, uh, what specific supplements? So we're going to do a, uh, a nootropic. So do you know what a nootropics are? Oh, no. So they help, they increase your uh, like memory and focus, yeah. right? So what happens like a lot of times, and I'm not sure, maybe some of the listeners feel like this, but like I know when I was working nine to five, um, like I would come home from work and like, even in the morning, I'd feel so good. I'm like, I wish I could just stay home and work on my business. Like instead, yeah. cause I have so much energy. Then when I would come, when I would drive home from work, I would just feel like exhausted. Like all the energy was gone. Like all that, that energy. I felt, I felt like I, I was so creative during the day, but I was like wasting it all at my, at my job. So by the time I got home, I was just like so exhausted, tired, um, and just feeling like I didn't feel like working basically. Um, and this is so I started testing out different kinds of, uh, uh, at this time, like different kinds of nootropics, energy drinks, mixing them all together, trying to like w wake my ass up, like when I got home from work, so I could like keep working and stuff. Um, so there's a couple different formulations that we've been um, testing around instead of like doing the thing that I was doing and mixing things together uh, from different brands. Um, it's been a process. Like if anybody's out there that actually wants to start a supplement business. It's, it's a long, long process, like for sure. So just be, uh, be weary of that, especially you if you're like FDA approval or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, you have to do tons of different testing for every single ingredient before they're even mixed together. Um, you got to get past the FDA. I mean, there's a lot that goes in, in, into it, but, um, again, with my supplement, like it's going to be a continuity. It's going to be a subscription, right? Like, okay, you can get, you can buy it one time from our page, right? And this is all we're going to sell. Just a supplement, right? I practice and I preach. That's all we're gonna sell, it's just a supplement. And then once they buy it, they'll see an upsell page. They'll be like, hey, instead of coming here, paying you know, $49.99 for this next time, why don't we just put you on our auto ship program or you pay $39.99 a month, right? You get $10 off and we ship you one of these every single month so you're never, you know, never without it. Your first of line service in case we're ever you know, sold out. Right. So right there, that's like, even though I'm losing a little bit of margin right there, I'm, I'm okay with that because I never have to pay for that customer again. Right. Like I never have to pay for that customer uh, ever again. And usually a lot of stuff that we do with our businesses is we, we drive traffic from, uh, from Facebook or influencers. We'll get influencers to shout out our products to make sales. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are just organic. Like they just find you naturally. It's a combination. Um, I think most people are trying are getting to the point where, especially because of how Instagram is, right? They're really suppressing a lot of organic views these days. Most people are transitioning to shout outs, influencers, uh, Facebook ads. Yeah, I would. If you want to light like a fire under your uh, like your personal brand, like we did this for a while when we started to give yourself that like that extra push to get to your like first you know 10,000 subscribers or whatever you were, you're trying to get to is run ads not selling anything but just selling yourself just being like hey yo i just released this new music i just wanted to show you it real quick if you enjoy it um just make sure you click in the you know whatever the corners are with the ads and subscribe but we're just gonna let the uh, this music play right now and see if you like it All right that's it you didn't even ask for anything right? Then they're going to be disrupted right there. They're going to like your music, hopefully, and then they're going to subscribe, right? Then they can click to subscribe. We're, we're, in, a, we're in a world where there's search-based marketing and then there's interruption-based marketing, 
okay? Search base, that means they went to you know, Google or YouTube and somehow found you, right? And an interruption base is what basically you have to do to stand out from everybody else. You have to stop them from scrolling on Facebook, right? You have to get them to pay attention to your YouTube ad, your Instagram ad, whatever it is, and get them over to your platform so you create that asset, right? And get them into your business, you know, build that relationship with them before they finally go to your business, buy your t-shirt or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to be a lot of people that are like struggling to get to that first, you know, thousand subscribers on YouTube or to get listens to their music. I think you shouldn't focus necessarily like focus on your music, of course, but you also need to start focusing on how to get people to listen to the music because unfortunately we don't live in a world where it's like, Oh, build it and they will come. They will not come. Okay. There's a lot of products that are, um, are better, but they don't sell. Right. You see this all the time, right? Because some people just, they know how to market it. So the people that are marketing it properly make the sales, even though this product right here might be so much better than this one, but the, this is the one that's marketing being marketed to the, to the right audience, the right niche and is the one making sales. So I think like having some sort of paid traffic and obviously this goes to whatever your budget is to push people to, to find you because they're not, unfortunately, like I said, it's not enough to just be like, Oh, I'm just going to build it. And, and they're going to come like, it, like five years ago, that might've been the case, right? When all, a lot of these social platforms were new, but now you're basically competing against a ridiculous amount of people that are all basically trying to do the same exact thing, you know? Yeah. And when it comes to having a bootstrap budget, right? I don't have a lot of money. That's not the mindset that I'm in. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the little bit of money that I have? I do a hundred dollars over one week. Or do you prefer a hundred dollars spent five dollars a day, ten dollars a day, or does it not matter for you? I personally prefer to do it like over a period of time. So if you can do it like, like if I had to a choice, I would do it like I would just run five dollars a day as long as I could, right? As long as that advertisement is is performing well, it's you know it's translating to revenue. It's going to be harder to track that in the beginning. A lot of the money isn't going to necessarily have a direct. Um, direct correlation to sales, but some of the things that you're going to be able to do once you build up your audience is like, for example, let's say they land on your, your funnel, let's just call it store, right? Where they're going to buy your t-shirt, right? You're going to be able to retarget to that person, right? On Facebook, on YouTube, on Google, right? Where they can come back and check it out again or give them more information about it. And those, that kind of stuff is so cheap, right? Because only you can target that person, right? With that retarget because they visited your website. And it sounds complicated. No, I mean, Facebook is like the easiest thing to use. Like I, I think anybody can do it with a little bit of just knowledge and learning the platform. Um, but you, that audience is so much cheaper now to retarget, right? Like for me with e-commerce empire builders, right? If I wanted somebody to come like, you know, uh, give me like a hundred bucks or whatever, right? Like to buy something from me for a hundred bucks with cold people that have never heard from me before, I basically have to pay a hundred bucks to make a hundred bucks. Right. That's basically what I have to do yeah. to me. I'm okay with that. Cause I'm a marketer. I understand that most money is made on the back end. And I know that I'll make more than a hundred dollars from that customer. But if I have somebody that viewed one of my YouTube videos and I've retarget them now with an advertisement to buy something from me for a hundred dollars, that now is literally probably gonna cost me like 25 bucks to make a hundred. It's, it's, it's the most profitable thing. So if you already have a YouTube channel, like if you are going to do this, I would be like, Hey, you know what? Everybody that's viewed my video ever or all my subscribers, cause you can go into, I don't know if you know that, but like on your, you can go in there and you can retarget people that, you know, the last viewed two days or engaged in the last two days and retarget those people with an offer. They'll buy from you. I can almost guarantee it. And that brings me to a question because I've been in these discussions before as far as the retargeting period. Now, of course, it's subjective, but like 365 days, which is the maximum they let you go on a lot of platforms, is too much, right? But mm -hmm. what is for a beginner, just some super, uh, as a more general um, answer, what would you say would be a nice threshold for people to keep it at maximum? So people who engaged or people who have just viewed your content? both both so i usually it depends like it depends on the offer and what it is if it's like a temporary like offer like for example let's say it's just a temporary thing 
that you're just launching a t-shirt for a week's period. Like I would do everybody I could. I would get all of my subscribers, everybody, because I'll throw as much money as I can at it. Right. Um, but if it's something where I'm trying to drive people to a certain website just to get their email address or something like that, I would keep it like two, three days. I believe we have it set to two days right now. Engage. Got it. So when there's, when there's financial gain on the other end, then it, it, the logically it just makes more sense to increase mm -hmm. the size of the pool. Yes. And, and again, the retargeting campaigns that you have, like for you will be so much cheaper, like cheaper instead of going and being like, Oh, I'm just going to go target the people that like music. Right. Yeah. Like you can, you can utilize your retargeting people to like, Hey, come, you know, uh, check out this shirt that we just launched or whatever, whatever you, you can push them to whatever. Cause you even think about it. Like a lot of creators, especially on YouTube, they rely on Google AdSense, right? Like, like, like to get paid, which is like a shame because like, that's like peanuts compared to what you, what you can make from your audiences. Right. You just have to think, like, think about it a little bit. Like maybe it's not good. Maybe it doesn't make sense to do merch. Maybe it's, uh, they just want to do, um, maybe they just want access to like a private group where they get to hang out with you every Sunday night. Right. You go live for like four hours and you just hang out with everybody. Right. And like, it's just like stuff like that. Like, so I have a friend and he has like, uh, he does like, uh, he smoke like does meat smoking or whatever the thing is. Um, and he had a Facebook group, a public one, and he had like, I think like 50,000 people in that. And he used to just go live in there, teach people how he was smoking meats on like, I think he literally did it on like Saturdays or Sundays. And somebody asked him, hey, you should do like a private group. So he did, he created one for nine bucks a month. You get access to another private Facebook group where he goes live once a week inside there and teaches you what he's doing, how he's, he basically is doing, he's living his life and he just records one piece of it for these people. Cause he would be smoking his meat anyway. Right. So, so it's, it's just a different way of, uh, of thinking. I, I like that idea. It depends on your audience. I think yours, I think would, because like you have a lot of people that follow you. So they would love to get to know you more, like get to be on a personal level and stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I'm kind of weird about stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's by nature I've been learning, but I, I, I definitely agree with the thesis and what I think, especially for artists in general, right. Um, people are invested into your lifestyle in, in general. All right, so there's so many little cat categories and spaces where you can literally monetize, like you said, something that you're already doing. Just mm -hmm. for a small, you don't have to do much effort, extra effort. Maybe you pay somebody else to be able to do the recording and uploading and all that stuff for you mm -hmm. to make it even easier on yourself. But as far as the amount of effort and energy, you just become a walking, I mean, you know, walking bank or, or collector just because of just because of the nature of the relationship between fan and artist typically, especially when we get into like little kids and you know, the younger, the younger fans, it's a little bit different as an adult, but. I mean, think about it like this one. Um, I forget what this YouTube channel is, but he, I think they do like a couple million dollars a month and the kid just unboxes toys. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that kid does like over a million dollars a month and he's like 10 years old. Right. Like, you know, so it's like thinking about things like, and he makes, believe it or not, he makes most of his money from referring people to Amazon. So when he, so like, for example, here's another good one. Like if you guys, like if you ever refer anything to your customers or to your prospects on a YouTube video or, or wherever you're doing it, go look if they have an affiliate program. So Amazon, if you go to the bottom footer of Amazon, you could sign up for their affiliate program. So every time you send somebody to Amazon, you get a commission for everything they buy in the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So let's say I recommend a lot of books. So I have a, I like reading. So I recommend a lot of books on my YouTube channel. And I'm like, okay, go click down below. I have the book. It's my, our affiliate link. They'll click it. They go to Amazon. If they buy the book, I'll make a little commission. But then if they decide they want to buy a, you know, 70 inch TV or whatever, I also make commission off that. So just a little way to, you're not going to, you're not going to make thousands upon thousands of dollars a month doing this way, but it's like an extra hundred, 200 bucks a month, you know? So yeah. it builds, it builds up over time, right? Mm -hmm. It builds up over time. And it's just like, again, like, thinking about like everything that you do in a sense of like somehow creating something like look at like top celebrities, the you know, Instagram stories. Like, like I look at like my fiance and stuff like, like she follows this one influencer and I love like looking at like marketing, like I, like looking at why people are doing so. Like I don't use social media for like, as most people do. Like, I just look at it as business. 
right? Yeah. It is. It's purely business. It should be for all you guys. Um, but like, I like, she follows this one influencer, not a big influencer, she's constantly putting out stories, talking about her life, what she's doing. Next thing you know, she's selling something, right? Boom. You know, my fiance buys it. It's like, boom. Like, but it would have never happened if she just came out of the blue and was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to sell this thing, right? My fiance wouldn't have bought it, but it's that relationship, right? That, oh, this influencer, she, I know her life almost, right? She's showing like, you know, her doing things with her family and having a fun time and you start feeling like a connection with that person. So by the time they do refer something and that's what this girl does, she just refers people to like Old Navy or whatever. Like, and it's like, oh, I just got this shirt at Old Navy, swipe up to buy it. So she gets paid from Old Navy when they, they buy. So think of things like that, like that people wanna, are gonna buy anyway to just get them to buy it from you. You know, so you get a cut. Got it. Makes sense. Makes, while I'm thinking about it, you mentioned the supplement brand and they are, what is it again? Neurotics? Nootropic. Nootropics. Yeah. <laughs> Nootropics. Okay. Yeah. So that causes me to think, you know, you're an entrepreneur. You, you've, you've built a lot of businesses. You even talked about some of the ups and downs. What do you do personally when it comes to just getting in a healthy mental space, a healthy, a healthy just routine in general? Yeah, I, I love talking about this stuff. And I know a lot of you guys, maybe some of you guys watching this will be like, woo, like, oh, it's just so woo woo stuff. Like, you know, you don't want you don't care about mindset. But I can tell you, like, since I started working on my mindset, like my life has been better. Like there's three core desires to live a good life. In my opinion, it's your health, wealth and your relationships. Any one of those that suffers, like I don't, you could put anything in life into one of those three buckets. But if any one of those suffers, if your relationship sucks, your your pride, your 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 wealth is gonna suck because like they're all like they're all like connected in a weird way. Like they all need to be kind of there to be successful, and even in any one of them. So with in terms of like mindset for me, like I do this thing. Like I have like this journal. It's actually right here, um, and I literally I've journaled for like years and i love looking back like i recommend you do it like write down just just start writing things down that you do every single day uh and or goals that you have and i love looking back at them like from years past and be like oh my god like it's just so funny looking at myself like oh my god, totally different person um, but other things i do is like i create these uh i have this journal that i read every morning and every night so okay. Essentially, right, all of us have this, this, this life that we want, right? It's like, oh, we want a Lamborghini or we want this mansion or, or whatever this, this goal is, right? And I believe anybody watching this, anybody that sets any goal for themselves can achieve that, whatever they want, right? Because if one person could do it, I believe anybody can do it. You just need to figure it out, right? Like figure out the path. So what I like to do with this journal is I love to, like the first page of it is like everything I've ever accomplished in my life, like up to this point. Right. And every one of us has accomplished something we're proud of. Right. I could tell you like graduating college, graduating high school, you know, maybe you have a kid, like maybe, whatever, it could be stupid. Maybe you have a nice car or whatever it is that you're proud of, put it on this page. Maybe you're proud of your family or your mom or whatever it is that you're proud of that you appreciate in your life, put it on this page and just look at it every single morning. I look at this page. I'm like, okay, this is where I'm currently at in my life. Currently things I'm proud of. And then I love to have like a, like a vision board. Um, and on this vision board is like literally, and this should be fun for people, putting everything you want that you think would make you happy, right? So you could put like the dumbest material things that you'd want, whatever, you know, watches, like Lamborghinis, houses, right? And then like also put things in there that actually are tangible, like not as tangible, like people that you aspire to be like. Like, you know, like who are like people that you look up to? Like maybe there's a book of somebody you read. Maybe there's like, um, you know, like, you know, for me, like one of them is Walt Disney. I think he was like one of the greatest businessmen that ever existed, right? Like ruthless guy, even though everybody thinks Disney world is such a great place, but he's a ruthless businessman. Like, yeah. it, like you can add, like people don't like working at Disney world because <laughs> it's like hard. Yeah. I know. I, I, know. I had, I was friends with uh, somebody who interned there. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, it has to be like, sometimes if you're trying to grow a biz, like you got to be ruthless sometimes. Um, I mean, to an extent, but uh, I love having these two pages that I look at and like think about everything. And it's like when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to one, I'm going to know where I'm at in my life and I know where I'm going. So I have like a clear vision of what I'm going to do. And when I read it at night, even though my day might've been like totally shitty, it might've been a terrible day. I'm going to read it. Even though a lot of times you're not going to feel like you're going, I'm too tired. Just do it, read it, look at where you're currently at and then what you want to accomplish. What do you want to achieve? Because I can tell you, you're going to sleep better that way too, right? Like you're just going to be like, oh man, like I, you have all these things that you want to accomplish in life. And I can tell you like, 
weirdly enough, like these things manifest. I'm telling you, they manifest. Like for example, two years ago, I just read this to my fiance the other day, like two years ago, I said, I wanted like this area that I live in. I said, I wanted a brand new construction home, like brand new. Never have I ever lived in a new house ever. I used to always like, share bedrooms and never do this stuff when I was growing up. But I was like, in, in two years from now, I want to be able to buy us a brand new house. And we just did. This was like a brand new house that we just moved into last month. And it's weird how these things, they manifest into reality for you, right? And you have to, like a lot of us, we don't trust that we're on the right path. We second guess ourselves. Or are we doing the things that we're supposed to be doing? But you have to become like this. I think part of the process is like understanding where you're currently at, right? Which is right here. And then where you want to go, which is this is going to force you to do. So is that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I, I like that. Um, so just some things around what you've said. I think there has to be a sense of, you know, being honest of where you're currently at because you can only work from there. Um, but then also ensuring that the actions are parallel with those desires that you talked about. Mm -hmm. So was there ever a period where you felt like you were doing something similar of an activity, but it didn't manifest in reality because maybe your actions weren't as you know, they weren't in line at the time or maybe it took way, way longer because it took a while for your actions to find yeah. out. You know, yeah, I mean, I have things that are my, like there's one thing I really want, like and it's probably not gonna happen for like 10 years. Like I want a, I want like a villa in Greece, all right? I love Greece, like it's my favorite country. And like, I knew like that, like, you know, that's like a long-term thing because that's like a really expensive thing to ever even own. Um, but yes, like you sometimes like, and this is becoming clear, like you have to like believe that, there, so like, it's, this is going to sound crazy, but like you, there is a version of you in the future, like that has all the things you want, right? Because there's like one choice that you can make right now. And I remember like when I quit my job, I was like, I can, I keep saying I'm going to quit my job, right? I, I keep saying, I keep putting it off. I keep, I keep saying I'm going to do it. Right. But it, like, I'm not like, and there's like some decision that you can make right now in your life that will totally, totally like disrupt where you're going. Right. Like that was a decision for me that I, when I made that decision, I was like, Oh, I'm not coming back here. And I quit. Right. And, but I could have still been there right now. Like I could have still been there and I can tell you, I wouldn't be where I'm at with that. So you have to think about like, you, you have to learn, to, like, this is the key. Like you have to learn to get comfortable being uncomfortable because if you're waking up every single morning, like tired or whatever, you're, you're not treating your body right or, or whatever it is. And you're always just like, you're not uncomfortable, then yes, you have to start pushing your limits a little bit more. Start doing things that you don't want to do, right? Like for me, when I started the YouTube channel, I didn't want to put my face on it. I just didn't. I felt uncomfortable. I was like, oh, I'm just going to do like a podcast. I don't want to do it, right? But I can tell you, if I, got, if, I, if I didn't just like man up and was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to, I got, you all, you have to push yourself to do things that you don't want to do, right? Like there's a, re, like, like there's a, re, you think like a lot of these guys that are like billionaires or millionaires, multimillionaires, like they've done things that they didn't want to do to get to the point that they're at. Right. And you have to think about there's stuff that you're probably putting off today. You're like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Whatever that, you know, you need to do. Okay. So like, for example, like just us talking about this, like monetizing, like taking a step towards doing something like that, or maybe there's like a song or, or something that you wanted to put out, but you're scared everyone's going to make fun of you because you put it out or whatever it is. Like, just do it. You know, do you know what I mean? Like there's, there are, if you're every day, you're not like, like I am exhausted. Like I obviously self-employed, but like I am, men I'm mentally like totally drained by it every day. I'm literally physically exhausted at the end of every day. And you should feel that way too. Like if you are actually working hard in your business, if you've got like the energy to like, you know, do random things with your friends. Sometimes you got to like <clears throat> put that stuff off, put that stuff off so you can work on the things that matter in your life. And that comes, to, you know, I, and I don't know, like you know, for me, I'm not surrounded necessarily by a lot of uh, like successful people. I kind of had to force myself into successful groups of friends online and stuff like that. Yeah. And I can tell you a lot of my friends held me back for a lot of years. I, I'm comfortable saying that now. So I limit contact with a lot of them. Right. We'll hang out like maybe once a month or something like that. They're my friends. They're like people I trust. They're not people that are ever going to be like, Oh, you have money now. Like I'll take advantage of me. They're like my, they're my like friends for years and years and years. Right. But you have to audit yourself sometimes because if you're trying to get somewhere, 
Like, and you're, you are the average of the five people you hang around, whether you believe it or not. Right. If you, all your friends are making like whatever, 10 grand a year or whatever, you're probably making 10 grand a year. Right. But I can tell you, if you start hanging around with some higher level people, like for example, when I was at this conference, we were hanging out with a bunch of people that were like making tens of millions of dollars a year. Like you feel it, you feel different standing in a group of these guys that are just like, they're totally normal, just like you and me, <laughs> yeah. but like you feel that the energy they release to you and show you, Hey, you know what? This guy, there's nothing special about him. He's a normal, he's just a normal guy like me and you, but like you could tell like the confidence, like the, the certainty that he has in life. Right. And when we're hanging around with people and just like drinking or whatever we're doing, like that is not getting you any closer to, to where you want to go. So I'm not saying cut off your friends or your family. Don't, don't do that by any means, but start trying to find some people that you can hang around with that are going to stretch you and push your limits. And if that isn't whatever, like I know a lot of you guys like are probably like, you know, they're doing the songwriting stuff. Like have a group of you guys that you're talking and holding each other accountable on something, right? Like support each other, right? Like collaborate or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like put, bring each other up together, right? Instead of always doing everything alone. Like I, I've done stuff so long in my life alone and like until I found like my own group of people that you know we're on the same level as me and we all just grow together you know we we, we grow as people we our incomes grow like you know our businesses grow so like start thinking about like how can I start how can you start hanging around with people that, that think like me that have the same goals as me right because if you're if you want to be able to share them with other people so they hold you accountable instead of just being like oh just writing them in your journal right yeah. But your friends, and believe it or not, unfortunately, like, <laughs> this is, like, bad to say, but, like, a lot of your, your friends and stuff, like, they'll support you. But, like, a lot of them, like, once you, like, find success, like, a lot of them will be mad at you. Because you, like, when you find success, a lot of people, your family usually not, at least in my case wasn't. I know a lot of people that have lost family members due to this kind of stuff. But, like, when you do find success and you start making money, like, a lot of your friends won't like you because they'll see They'll say, oh, it was, you, it was easy for you. It was a lucky, you got lucky or, or like whatever, but they don't see like all the hard work that it is. And then you are portraying something that they wish they had done, right? And this is like, this is a, a very, very important thing to, to grasp. And uh, this is why I don't um, necessarily always recommend you say everything to your friend like that you're doing. Like once, you're, once you start, like, you know, keep it separate, keep your business world Right. And then like your, 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 your relationship with them separate, you know, don't try and instill your beliefs because you're building a business now and you want like all this support from them. But that's just me. That might just be uh, my, uh, my experience with it. But no, you know, that, that brings me to an interesting question. I never would have thought I would be ask, asking this when I got to uh, when the interview started, but um, what about with your relationship and your, with your fiance, right. Mm -hmm. so, and um, one, if you, if you care to share, like, how long have you guys been together? So three, three years. Okay. Three years. So how is that relationship in terms of the, the amount of work that you probably do? Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know at what level you guys, what you were personally when you guys met, but what is that dynamic of communication like? And how do you, and do you, and to what extent do you talk about business? Yeah. So it's funny. I was just talking to just a friend of mine about this. Like, so for me, I always recommend like you guys that are, cause you're going to be mentally exhausted and you're doing, you're starting out. It's fine. Like just, you know, if you can commit to working really freaking hard a Monday through Friday, fine. Give yourself Saturday and Sunday off. Like do just hang out with friends, family. Usually for me, I just pick Saturday or Sunday and I'm just hanging out. I'll go meet up with friends. I'll go hang out with my fiance, go hang out with family, you know, do whatever. Right. But like Monday through like Friday, it's like grind time for me. Like I'm up at six in the morning. Usually I work till seven. I'm basically exhausted. And then I just hang out with my fiance for the rest of the night. Get dinner, you know, watch Netflix, hang out, whatever. Um, go to a movie, whatever it is. But and it was funny when I was talking about this with, with, my, with my friend. It was actually Allie. Um, and he, he's like, well, like, oh, do you like talk about business? Like and stuff like that. And the thing is, you for me, if she was like me, there's no way this would work. <laughs> like, okay. I, in here. I love the re like, I couldn't have, I don't think I could ha live with somebody like me, dude. Like a hundred percent. Like I <laughs> like work ridiculously hard. Like I want to be able to like, when it's time to just hang out, I just want to hang out with somebody. Don't, we don't have to talk about business. Just talk about life. And that's it. Right. Like she has like a couple of her own little business that she does, but it's not like, Oh, we're just talking about business, business, business all the time. It's just, you know, so it just, 
that's like a separate thing for me. You know that's what I mean? Crazy. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like, that's I, mean I know a lot of people. Go yeah. ahead. No, I was just say I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I, I can't have that all the time because I can't turn it off myself. So I need people who, who can't. <laughs> and you shouldn't need to, ever, like me, I think about business 24 seven and you should, you, yeah. you shouldn't, if you're starting a business and I tell people this a lot, it's like, if you're starting a business that you're trying to escape from, then that's, that's the wrong bit. You're in the wrong business. Like I think about business 24 seven, which is a good thing. It's my business. If I don't work in it, nobody is, I'm going to be poor. Right. Like, but it's, it's important to like step away from it sometimes and like have that, you know, those times where you don't necessarily talk about it. So usually for me, it's like after seven, you know, Monday through Friday or Saturday, like, I'm just like, you know, I'm just hanging out with my fiance. Not, we don't need to talk about business. Yeah. Of course we talk about hey, what's going on in business in general and stuff like that. Um, but not like, not like, and this is one of the things like when I, when we first started dating, like when I was building my business, I was like trying to instill all these things. I'm like, are you excited? Like, Oh my God, like, look at all this stuff like I'm doing. And like, she's like, Oh, that's cool. Like, so it was, it was different. Like she's seen me like from the point where it's like, we were, I wasn't making as much money when we first met to the, to the point that we're at now. And it's like, she hasn't changed at all. Like it's, it's crazy, man. I was thinking, I'm like, damn, like this is, this was really, this was a really good girl I found because like, I feel like a lot of other people would have like, and I'm not saying like I'm banking right now, but like a lot of people would have probably taken advantage of me right mm-hmm. along, along the way. Like I've seen it happen with my friends and stuff like that. Um, so like, thinking about like that where where we were and to this point it's like she's the same person i'm the i'm the same person like she was there with me even like through all the chaos i'm telling you like this entrepreneur journey like you know i've battled so many things through it and like she's been there like when you're building your own business it's like the toughest thing you'll ever do because you're gonna have businesses that fail you're gonna struggle all the time you're gonna feel depressed all the time and you need somebody there that's gonna like you know still like support you keep pushing you forward um you know but yeah, dude, like hundred percent. Like I, I needed it to be uh, at least for me. I know a lot of these power couples that are out there. I don't think <laughs> I don't think I could do that, man. Like me personally, I don't think I could do that. Dope, man. Hey, I always say I, I try to push as much as possible, man. Self awareness is is everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell everybody, especially when we're talking about the artists, right? This big independent thing, which is essentially being an entrepreneur if you're doing it to the max. You have record labels. Of course, there's a, a lot of bad things that come with record labels, but if you're not the type to be very entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. there's a lot of bad things that come with doing that as well. You have to understand what's going to be the uh, best situation for you. So I, I love that, you know, you say, hey, power couple, that's that's a cool <laughs> thing, but it's not what yeah. will work for me. So that's that's cool. It could work for people out there. Again, yeah. I just know my personality. It's yep. not for me. But for other people, like if, if somebody watching here is doing that and you feel fulfilled and happy, don't like we're this is the most amazing part about being a human being is like just because one thing is like i like and one thing you don't like it doesn't matter right you you don't have to do the same thing as me to, to feel fulfilled in your life you know 100 percent, man 100 percent. hey well i really appreciate the conversation man it's been a joy talking to you and everybody follow him at um empire builders i'll i'll be putting the link in the description just to, you know, multiple links to things that you should check out from Peter. Um, but other than that, are there any thoughts that you would love to leave the audience with? My thing is like, honestly, like, what, do, like, it's great to listen to what we just talked about, right? And some people will listen to it and get some ideas from the stuff that we talked about, but never actually do anything with it. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm challenging like whoever, if you got like one little dumb idea, even though it might have not even been like what we said, but it sparked something like an idea in your head, like act on it. Because like so many people, they consume a lot of content. They say they're going to do these things, but then they don't ever do it. Yeah, one of the yeah. reasons I think I'm as successful as I've gotten, and I've gotten this like a lot from members of my team is like, I will like, if I think of something in the morning, like I'm doing it immediately and putting it into play place. Like I don't wait like two weeks or a week to think about it. Like, and this is a lot of things I've seen from like the people that I've hung around with that are really successful is like when they get an idea, they just implement it immediately, right? You have to be able to take action quickly on the ideas because the moment you let it sit, right, for a week, you're not going to have that inspiration that you have in this very moment. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. I think that's something that is, that's why I always say there's so much more creativity to, to building a business than people give credit for. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's all. Awesome. Well, hey, once again, this is Peter Pru. You already know who I am, brand man. And I would love to know you guys' thoughts on this conversation. Put it in the uh, you know the comment section below. 
But other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.